Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is barbecue pork spare ribs on the Yoder Smokers flat top charcoal grill. Well, pork ribs are one of people's favorite barbecue meats, me included, I love pork ribs, and my personal favorite is spare ribs. You kinda got the choice between the spare ribs, which are down by the belly, or your back ribs, your baby back ribs, which, which are up by the loin. Now, I really like the texture of the spare ribs, and that's what we're gonna be tackling today. We're gonna get these ribs trimmed up St. Louis style, so they're squared up really nicely. You separate out the bones from the rib tips. We'll go through all of that, but first, let's get this grill fired up. Now, like I said today, we're gonna be smoking on the Yoder Smokers flat top charcoal grill. Now, this is an adjustable grill, so we can move the coals up and down as we need to. The first thing we wanna do is get a couple chimneys of charcoal started, just some nice big lump charcoal. That's gonna be our coal bed. So we're gonna start by lighting two chimneys of charcoal on either side. We're only gonna be using one rack today. We're gonna to do all of our smoking right here in the center. That way, as we start to smoke, we've got our charcoal bed here. We'll have some wood chunks. That smoke comes up and goes right out the stack in the middle. We get all that smoke and complete indirect cooking. So we're gonna start with just a fire starter cube here. That's gonna get our charcoal going inside the chimney. Load it up. We're gonna do the exact same thing on this side. I'm gonna give the chimneys a little time to get going. Meanwhile, we're gonna trim up our spare ribs. So here we have our spare rib. Uh, this is pretty much what you find at any big box store around here. This is about five pounds, runs you just a little over $2 a pound in our part of the country. You can see if we go to the bone side, We've got this flap of meat right here that we're gonna take off. And this is not something that you need to discard. You can either cook it and eat it as a snack or throw it in your grind for sausage. It's great for either. As we look at the spare ribs, they're cut here. The bottom of the bones run along here. And then down here we have some cartilage that runs through the area that we call the rib tips. So what we wanna do is square this off into one nice clean rack of ribs and then again, the rib tips, the extras, you can either cook them and eat them as snacks or put them in your grind. So the next step that I typically take is I'm gonna find the longest bone here, which is gonna usually be two or three, four in, and that's right here. I'm gonna find the end of that bone, plunge my knife down and cut back. And I'm gonna flip this around and keep a nice even cut all the way across the rack. So now you've got that separation of the rib tips. I'm gonna come down here and trim off the end as well. Kind of find our last bone. We're not cooking these for competition, so I'm not gonna worry about making them really pretty, but we are gonna square these up and make sure that we don't have any bones poking out. For example, just a bit of a bone fragment here so we can go ahead and trim that off, square up that last rib. And then the only thing that I really need to worry about now is getting this membrane off the back of the ribs. Now typically, if you can scratch at this and you don't get any fat coming up, that means that there's a membrane that's on top of the meat right here. So we're gonna peel that off, otherwise you're just gonna be chewing on it after it's cooked. So I like to just come in here with a paper towel. We're just gonna kinda peel away at the corner there until that membrane starts to come up. And then if we're lucky, we can grab a hold of this and pull it off all at once, just like that. And there's that membrane that's just never gonna break down when you cook it, there's no reason to leave it on there. By taking it off, we're allowing more smoke and seasoning to penetrate through the back side of these ribs. So meat side, really nothing to do here. If you wanted to do a little trimming, you can, but I don't mind a little fat on the surface. There's nothing on there that I don't want on there or that we don't wanna eat. So. That's totally good. I'm gonna go ahead and trim up the second rack and we'll move on to seasoning. So now that we've got our coal banked all the way to the side, I'm gonna throw in a couple chunks of cherry wood. And then here and there, throughout the cook, I'll probably just add a piece of lump charcoal just to keep our coal bed going. So the cherry is gonna give us some nice smoke and nice color. And again, we'll just throw in a little bit more charcoal, but I'm gonna drop this down for now. Now to monitor the temperature inside the grill today, we're gonna to be using the Fireboard 2 and just an ambient air uh, probe thermometer that we're gonna stick right here on the rack, right next to where the ribs will be. Let's close down our airflow just a little bit. 
And we'll go ahead and adjust the air at the bottom as well to close that down. Now for the seasoning, we're gonna start with a little slather of a mustard barbecue sauce, the Coslix Carolina barbecue sauce. Then we're gonna hit it with our first layer of rub, which is the honey chipotle. And that's got a nice sweetness to it, whereas the next one's gonna have a little bit more salt and a little less sweet, and that's the Yardbird. I also love that paprika red color out of this rub. So great combo of rubs right here, kind of covers all your bases. Don't need to go too heavy. Enough to spread it all across the surface. So we'll start with just the back side of the ribs here, the bone side. Get these slathered and seasoned up. And let that rub set before we flip them. Start with the honey chipotle. And true to its name, the honey chipotle has got dried honey powder in it, which definitely gives it that honey flavor, as well as the chipotle chilies. And those are really the stars of the show there. Now with the yard bird, this is just a little bit more classic barbecue rub. Salt's number one on the list, but there's some sweetness to it as well. And then of course that nice paprika red. So those will set up. We just wanna wait until it looks wet on the surface, then we'll flip them and season the other side. So looking good on the surface here, we're gonna flip these over and season the other side. Once again, we'll hit them with the mustard. Get our surfaces covered. And then we're gonna come in with our honey chipotle. And top it off with the yard bird. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and place our ribs bone side down right here in the center. And then we've got our rib tips. Just gonna load them up. Leave a little bit of room for that smoke to get around. All right, so the goal here is to keep it around 275. We're gonna get some fluctuation and that's fine. Occasionally we'll add a little bit of charcoal as we need to, another chunk of wood if we want to. Uh, but for now, all we gotta do is close this thing up and let it smoke. All right, guys, we're gonna add a little bit of extra charcoal. Temperatures drop down to about 250. So I've just lit up a little bit of charcoal in the chimney. We're gonna add a little bit more, try to bump that temp back up to about 300. And we'll just kind of continue this process to keep that temperature stabilized between 250 and 300. This is just about an hour into our cook now. You can already see these pockets of uh, moisture and fat starting to form on the surface. We're taking on some smoke. Trucking right along, I'm gonna add another little chunk, actually a good fist sized chunk of cherry wood to our coal bed. Well, here we are two hours into the cook. The color's looking really awesome on the ribs. You can see some of these little scrap bits probably just about cooked through over here. Maintain that two, 250 to 300 degree fire. Still got a coal bed going, kind of adding coals here and there. Actually got a fire going off to the side. I'm gonna take some of that hickory wood and throw it in here now. It's a skinny split, but it's already going. Let I add some nice smoke as well. Let's just keep rolling. All right guys, the ribs have been on for two and a half hours total now. They're looking beautiful. They're ready to wrap. So we've got this great color on the outside. It's still red, it's not too dark. We're gonna stop that coloring process here by wrapping these in foil. You'll notice that these still have some bend and bounce to them. When they're all the way done, they're just about gonna break over. And you could cook these without wrapping them. You could cook them all the way through open. You'll get a crunchier exterior, a little bit drier on the interior, but you can totally do that. Today, we're gonna wrap one with some brown sugar and honey, kind of similar to a comp style, but really just for people who like their ribs sweet. The other one, we're simply gonna wrap the way it is. We're not gonna add anything to it, and we'll sauce them at the end. All of these rib tips and the extra pieces, they're gonna come off now too. Some of them are ready to snack on. Some of them we can wrap up and put back onto the grill. So this first rack, we're just gonna wrap without any additions. Two sheets of foil, make sure that we don't break through 
with any of the bones or the sharp edges. In fact, if you feel around on the corners and you get a really pokey edge like that, I might just tear that off so it doesn't poke through. Now this second one we're gonna do the sweeter application. So we'll put down a handful here of brown sugar and a squeeze of some wildflower honey. And then meat side down on top of that. We just hit this one with a little bit more of that honey chipotle rub as well for some sweetness on the back side. All right, back to the grill. Got another half chimney of charcoal here. We're just gonna add this to what's existing. We can bump up the heat just a little bit. Running at 300 now is gonna be just fine. No real need to add any wood smoke at this point. Just charcoal for the heat because we can't get smoke through the foil anyway. So let's just go right back in the center there. We'll close this up, let them keep on cooking. We're about four hours in on this smoke now and these ribs are feeling done to me, so come check them out. So first thing, typically I'll grab the foil pack, just kind of give it a feel, and you can see it's got some movement to it, which tells me that a lot of that connective tissue and fat has broken down inside. Now looking here at the bones, you can see how the meat has pulled away from the ends. That's another really good sign. And then if we were to kind of wiggle this back and forth, we can see that the meat is moving freely from the bone. And that tells me these are completely done. So these are the ribs that we cooked without the extra sugar on them. And this pack here, yep, also totally done. But we've got that extra glaze on the bottom. So now hot out of the foil, I like to get a little sauce on top if you're gonna sauce your ribs. I don't necessarily need it for mine, but we're gonna sauce two different ways today. The one that we added no extra sugar to, we're gonna go ahead and add some more of that same Carolina mustard sauce that we started with and just kind of paint it onto the surface. And when it's nice and hot, it just kind of tacks up to the surface on its own. Now with our sweeter ribs, we'll do a tomato-based sauce, one of my favorites, the Firebug Mild. Just got great fruitiness to it, actually has berries in it. But otherwise, just your typical kind of tomato-based sauce that people are looking for on barbecue, especially ribs. Again, just kind of painting it. Let it sit there for a minute and tack up. So let's go ahead and slice into our ribs here. Now one thing that's great to do when you're looking to slice is flip this over and look at the bones. It'll make it a lot easier to figure out where you need to do your slicing. So these are our ribs with just the mustard on the outside. They're looking super tender. Let's go ahead and cut up the sweeter ones as well. So now our sweet ribs. Feeling good, looking good. Those feel good too. Still have a little bite to them. That's what you want. Yeah. Let's start with this sweet rib. Man, I mean, that's exactly the texture I'm going for. This thing's not falling off the bone yet, but there's no resistance. Great smoke flavor on here. You know, on a charcoal grill, and even on an offset, doesn't take as long to get that smoke flavor into the meat as it does if you're cooking on, say, a pellet, or even a gas grill with wood chips or something. So. This may be a bit shorter cooked today than we would have done on our 640 on the pellet grill. Uh, and that's just a matter of how dark the meat gets before we wrap it. And those are all decisions you make, you know. So a four hour rib, pretty good with that charcoal wood smoke flavor. Super tender. That's kind of your ideal sweet rib right there. Now for the mustard one. This is the one I'm really excited about. I mean, look how juicy that looks. 
Oh, yeah. That's spare ribs for you. That extra fat content in there really makes for a juicy rib. I love the tanginess of the mustard on the outside. You still got a little bit of sweetness and saltiness from that rub. That's where it's at for me. I don't need all that extra sugar. I'm tasting the meat, the smoke, and the rub. And that's what I like. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue or barbecue legends are made.